Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are the living word. You are the living word. You are the living word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Jesus, you are the living word. Hallelujah. You, you are the word that, that, that still lives. You are the word that's still in our lives. And you, Jesus, being the living word, you cause us to live. You cause us to breathe. You cause us to move and you cause us to have our very being. Hallelujah. Come on, word of God, put your hands together. If you know that he's a living word in your life, if you know that word in your life keeps you living, if you know that word, if you know that he keeps you moving, hallelujah, keep you blessing, amen, keep you prospering. It's in him that we live, we move, we breathe, and we have our very being, hallelujah. Well, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen, our band. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you so much, James and Daniel. Thank you guys so much. Hallelujah. Welcome to another Wednesday in the Word of, Word of God Fellowship. Hallelujah. Yes, that's a good place to praise and a good place to put your hands together. Hallelujah. There's no other place I'd rather be right now. There's other places I could be, but I thank God I'm where he desired for me to be. Hallelujah. Before we go any further, we want to give honor to one of the greatest pastors. It's not the greatest pastor in the Raleigh area, our great pastors, our leaders, Pastor Mitch, Pastor Chantel, Summerfield. Come on, put your hands together for our pastors, God. Yes, yes, yes. You can stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Before I go any further, we honor our pastors and the job that he's doing here. Amen. Wouldn't you say that Pastor Mitch is doing a great job in leading us? Hallelujah. And taking us and leading us to where God is trying to get us. Hallelujah. A young man that, that, that had to learn how to pastor and how to lead. Amen. He told me, amen, this wasn't his calling. He wasn't looking for this. But the word of God declared that, amen, many are called. But there's a few. There's a few that's chosen. And I thank God he chose Pastor Mitch Summerfield. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Pastor Mitch. Amen. Thank you for... Allow me, amen, to stand in tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to call your attention, amen, to the word of God tonight. Turn you, your Bibles to the book of Exodus, amen. Who, those of you who have your Bibles, won't be before you long. Hallelujah. It's not my intention anyway. Be before you long. Amen. The book of Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapter 1. We're going to read 13 verses. The book of Exodus, chapter 1. Out of the NIV, we're going to lift up 13 verses, amen, and try to encourage your heart tonight, amen. It's the custom here at Word of God Fellowship that we stand for the reading of the word, amen. Can you please stand, if you're able, every able body, please stand for the reading of the word, amen, that we'll be in unison, amen. Hallelujah. Can't hardly see a lot, but if you have it, amen, say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Exodus. Amen. First chapter, beginning at um, verse number one. If my phone that right. Okay. 
Amen. Yes. 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 Man, I had this stuff all laid out and pretty. But it's all well and good. <laughs> Just a few minutes. We're going to be there. We're going to be there. Hallelujah. We're going to be there. Amen. The word of God read. Amen. These are the names of the sons of Israel who went to Egypt with Jacob, each with his family. Verse number two says, it was Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan and Naphtali, Gad and Asher. Verse number five says, the descendants of Jacob, number 70 in all, Joseph was already in Egypt. Now Joseph and all his brothers and all that generation died. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. I want to read that again. But, amen. But now Joseph and all his brother and all that generation died. But the Israelites, but the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. They multiplied greatly, not just multiplied, but they multiplied greatly. They increased in numbers and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. Verse number 8 said, Then a new king to whom Joseph meant nothing came to power in Egypt. He said, look, wait a minute, he said, look. He said to his people, the Israelites have become far too numerous for us. Come, we must deal truly with them or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, we'll join our enemies, fight against us, and leave the country. So they put slave masters over them to oppress them with forced labor. And they built Pitom and Ramses as store cities for Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. So the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all things being well. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you right now, God. We win, God, because you won. And on this night, Father, everything, God, that you have spoken, God, I decree, God, that I will speak it to your people. Now, God, give them, Lord Jesus, ears to hear, minds to receive, God, hearts to be receptive to your word. And we thank you right now, God. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people of God say amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you for standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to speak to a subject tonight for the time I have. Um, the power of your potential. The power of your potential. Amen. Before we start, amen, I want to, want to give some backdrop and, and, and give some background and add some, some context um, to the scripture that you might understand the content that, that actually lies within that scripture. Amen. The sons, of Israel, the sons of Israel or the Israelites, the defendants of Jacob, everybody know Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel after he fought with the angel all night long in the book of, in the book of Genesis chapter 32. Jacob's family had moved or descended to Egypt at the invitation of Joseph, one of Jacob's sons, because of famine in Canaan. Joseph had become a great ruler under Pharaoh. Jacob's family grew into a large nation. So there was a small caravan of people who descended from the land of Canaan into the land of Egypt because of a famine. There are 70 males along with their families. They are descendants of Abraham, the immediate descendant of Jacob. Joseph had become prime minister of the land, but as foreigners and newcomers, their lives were quite different from the Egyptians. The Hebrews worshiped one God, the Egyptians worshiped many gods. The Hebrews were wonders. They, 
Egyptians had a deep-rooted culture. The Hebrews were shepherds. The Egyptians were builders. The Hebrews were also geographically separated from the Egyptians. They lived in Goshen, north of the great Egyptian culture center. So in verse number 9, Pharaoh was afraid of the Israelites. They were becoming so numerous that he said, he said, come. He said, come. The Israelites are getting so numerous, and he was afraid that, that, that they would organize and threaten his kingdom because Pharaoh was very headstrong. He was a man, a, 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 a very, a very strong-minded man and, and didn't want to take down for anything. Pharaoh appointed Joseph over Egypt. So Pharaoh was afraid of the Israelites were becoming so numerous that they were organized and threatening his kingdom. So he imagined a hypothetical future war, something that hadn't even happened yet, something that they weren't even doing at that particular time, but because of the potential that they had and because of the power and the threat of their potential, he imagined in his mind they may come and get, and get together with those people already and they may come against us Amen. And war against me. Now he's talking about people that wasn't even armed already. They had no weapons. And so because of the potential that they had, the ability that they had, Pharaoh, he hypothetically formed a war in his mind already against unarmed, unarmed descendants of Israel and said they would join unarmed army and fight against them. So he made them slaves and he oppressed them to kill their spirit and stop their growth. How many times or how many of you know that any time the enemy decides to do anything to you, any time he feels like you are able to, to prosper, he's going to try to enslave you. He's going to enslave your finances, enslave you in your mindset, enslave you in your job, enslave you in your relationships. Why? Because he understands that there is potential. He understands that right now, we're not even doing anything. But just because of the potential that lies within us, he's afraid already. And don't, and don't never think, hallelujah, that, that, that you don't have power. That you don't have power. For those of you, amen, that was baptized on Sunday, where the hands at? Do we have any candidates in here? God bless you. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together for those that were baptized. Amen. A great time on Sunday. Hallelujah. A great time on Sunday. Thank you. Went down, went down in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sin. Hallelujah. But you have power. Hallelujah. He said, Come, we must deal shrewdly with them, or they will become even more numerous. And if war breaks out, he will join our enemies and fight against us and leave the country. So the word of God declared they put slave masters over them to make them work hard to try to kill their spirits, to try to make them think that they're not able to accomplish. But the word of God declares, the more they punished them, the stronger they became. The more he put slave masters over them, the stronger they came. The more he put work on them, the more he put them in the fields, the stronger they, came, they became. Why? why? Why is that? How is it that you, you, you oppress me, but I get strong? You beat me down, but I stand up. You kick me to the side, but I'm still here. I started from the bottom, but, but, but now I'm here. You put me in a place that's uncomfortable, but how do I rise up from that? You, 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 you think you made me weak, but how do I rise up? Jesus' strength, here it is, his strength is made perfect in our weakness. And so anytime we are weak, he's strong. Anytime we don't have strength, he shows strength. Anytime we're at the bottom, he rises up to the top. Why? Because we refuse to stop. We continue to give praise and we continue to give worship. Hallelujah. Egypt had levels of slavery. Some slaves worked long hours in the mud pits, while others were skilled carpenters, jewelers, and artisans. Regardless of their skill level, all slaves were worked closely by brutal slave masters. Supervisors whose assignment was to keep the slaves working as fast and as long as possible, thus making their lives miserable. Verse number 12 said this. 
the Egyptians tried to wear down the Hebrews by forcing them into slavery, mistreating them. Instead of the Hebrews, they multiplied and grew stronger. When we are burdened and we are mistreated, we may feel defeated, but our burdens, our burdens can make us stronger. By driving us, watch this, into prayer when we are burdened. We fast when we are burdened. Amen. We give when we are burdened. Come on, somebody. We call on the name of the Lord when we are burdened. Why? Because we know the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Come on. It's a strong tower. The word of God declares, and the righteous run into it, and they are safe. So anytime we are burdened, that just pushes us. That just pushes us more close to the altar. That pushes us at the feet of Jesus. That makes us open up our belly and call on the name of the Lord. That makes us cry out to him. The word of God declared that his ears are open to the cries of the righteous. So never get to the point where you can't cry out. Never get too big-headed where you think you're above yourself, where you can't say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I'm nothing without you. Lord, it's in you I live, I move, I breathe, and I have my very being. Lord, you are the one that causes me to breathe. You are the one that causes me to prosper. Lord, you are the one. It's in you, God. And everything that I have and everything that I need, it's in you. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to get to my text tonight. I want to speak to you tonight. Amen. The fear of your potential. The fear of your potential. What is that word potential? It's having the showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. So if you say someone or something has potential, you mean that they have the necessary abilities or qualities become successful or useful in the future. And that's what Pharaoh feared. He feared and he concocted in his mind a hypothetical war that wasn't happening then, but he thought in the future that they may, they may come together and fight against me and leave the country. Your potential is what the enemy is scared of. Your abilities, your understanding that God is for you. And the word of God declares, amen, because he's for you, not if he's for you, because I put it in my own, because he is for you, the world would be foolish to be against you. Because he, amen, walked beside you. Because he holds you up. Anyone would be foolish to stand against what the word of God said and the people of God. Regardless how you look at it, regardless what they think about you, amen, we are grounded, we are rooted in the word of God. We stand, amen, on the word of God. We live by the word of God. And it's the word of God that causes us to have life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's look at the perspective of potential. It says that it's likely to happen at a future date. It's concerned with or applying to the future. So right now may not be the place where we're happy at. Right now might not be our wealthy place. The position we might be in now might not be our happy place. The, the, the position we're in now might not be the place where we're more prosperous at. But I got news for you, and I got a word for you. That, that, that he that has, has begun, he that had a, done a good work, a good work in you, Sean, he that has begun a good work into you, James, God is not a man that he should lie. Watch this. He's not the son of man that he should repent. So if he has begun a good work in you, the word of God declares, hallelujah, he shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. So, so if I were you and God is working things in my life, I will stand to my feet right now and put my hands together and say, God, thank you for the good work that you're performing in my life. God, I thank you right now for moving in my life. Yeah, yeah, God, I thank you for moving in my finances. I thank you for moving in my body. I thank you for the good work, God, that you have started already. Yeah, it might not look right now where you're going. You might can't see. And you might not understand right now who you are. But, but let me put this in your spirit right now. 
The word of God declares the whole. He said, behold. I love this. He said, behold. In other words, look. He said, we, we, we are the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when he appear, we shall be like him. So right now, you might not be feeling well. You might not look the best. Your circumstances might not be the best. But, but in due time, in due season, we shall reap if we don't faint. In due season, we'll see things come to pass in our life. In due season, potential will open up in our life. In due season, we shall prosper and be in health, even as our soul prosper. Somebody put your hand together and give him a praise in this place. Hallelujah. 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 So what does potential means for a person? An entity which is not currently a person. I love this. Not currently a person, but which is capable of a de developing into a person giving certain biological circumstances. In the embryo stage, Jesus knows us. We, we, we're not a person then, but we're just in the embryo stage. We haven't been formed yet. We're just in the embryo stage. But given that certain biological makeup, as that woman begin, amen, and the baby get to form, amen, we become a living soul. We become a person. So, so, so in that stage, watch this, so in that stage, neither the mother nor the baby know what they're going to be. But Jesus already knows, come on, he said before I knew you, I formed you, amen, and I created you, and I chose you while you was in your mother's womb. So it means that, that right now, you might not be the person that you want to be. But, but I'm here to remind you and, and encourage you tonight that once, once we release our potential, there's things we'll discover that we had that we didn't even know about. Some of us right now are sitting on potential that haven't even been tapped into yet. There's, there's, there's the threat of your potential to the enemy. He's literally peeped into your future, Marvin Self said, and he knows what God's about to do for you. So what does he do? He attacks, amen, he attacks your future. He attacks where you're heading. Because right now, you're not making much noise, and he understands that. But he understands that God has things planned for you in your future. We're looking at, amen, the power of your potential. The enemy is watching now. He's watching, and he's gauging you on what you do or how you do it. When or even if you're going to do it. A lot of times we're apprehensive in moving forward and walking into our destination. Why? Because we don't understand the potential that lies within us. So we don't move when God say move sometimes. How many, you ain't got to raise your hand, but how many, amen, that God has spoken to you to move out on do, to do something and you have been apprehensive? Yeah, go ahead and start that business. Go ahead on and open up that shop. I know you've been on your job for, for, for 10 years. Go ahead on and do it. Don't be apprehensive. Don't, don't, don't let the enemy make you look at other people's failure and you not move out what God has for you to do. A lot of time, a lot of time is in our community, and I've seen this. Years ago, I, I have tried a lot of things. I have did so many things, did insurance and all, all kind of other things. And in our community, the first thing we say, well, uh, hey, man, I want to see what you can do first. I want to see how you do first. Yeah, yeah. I want to see, I want to see how you do. I want to see how you do first. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to wait and see how you do. Okay? I'm going to wait and see how you do. And, and, and if you don't do good, that means, you know, it might not meant for me to do it. Yes, it meant for you to do it. It's, it's meant for you to step out and open businesses. It's meant for you to prosper. It's meant for you to move forward. But you've got to realize your potential. Hallelujah. Realize your full potential. 
And a lot of times, yes, we're, appreh we're apprehensive moving forward and walking in our full potential because we don't know if we have the power, the confidence that we need. But be not dismayed. The word God tells us in John chapter 1, verse number 12. Watch. The word of God declared that Jesus came into his own. But it says his own receive him not. But to, but to them that believe him, and as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become. Not only power to become the sons of God and the children of God, but the power to become anything you desire to become, you can become that because he gave you power, amen, once you accepted him. So there is no limit. So we walk around in a limitless body. We walk around in a body that can't, amen, be defeated unless we defeat ourselves. Come on. Our winner never quits. And before we throw in the towel, we'll throw up our hands in praise. We'll not give it in. We'll not bow down. But we'll stand on the word of God. Because we understand, we understand this one thing. That our potential is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. He came into his own that received it not. As many as received him, to them he gave power. Acts chapter 1 says this, And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And I want to go back to those, amen, that was baptized, man, on Sunday. You have stepped and you have tapped into something that you didn't realize you was tapping into. The word of God declares, amen, and Peter told them, say, repent, every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Not only that, and that promise is not unto you, but it's promised to your children and your children's children and are far off as the Lord that God shall call. So what you did on Sunday, you just opened up doors for generations down the line that haven't even been born yet. You just tapped into something. You just tapped, amen, you just tapped into a place, amen, that people's not going to understand, amen, when you get there, how in the world did you get there? We have, amen, potential to be earth shakers. We have, we have the potential to move mountains. We have that potential. Why? Because we receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. Hallelujah. To those baptized, again, we thank God for you, and we hope you see changes in your life. Come on, give those that were baptized on Sunday, come on, Word of God Fellowship, give them a hand. Yeah. Hallelujah. You shall receive power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like Pharaoh being threatened by the Israelites, the enemy is threatened by your potential. You haven't even made an attempt to move out to that new job yet. You haven't even made an attempt to start that business yet. You haven't even made an attempt to buy that new house yet. You haven't made an attempt, amen, amen, to sow and to give yet. You haven't even made an attempt to do that yet, but the enemy is already threatened because he understands the power of your potential. Hallelujah. So he was threatened, amen, by the Israelites, and the enemy is threatened the same way. Hallelujah. Your potential you haven't even tapped into. The attempts that you haven't made. The Israelites, just like them, you have the potential to be dangerous. Tonight, Word of God Fellowship, you are walking time bomb because of your potential. You are like dynamite. You are like C4. Hallelujah. You are ready to explode, amen, any moment now because of your potential. Hallelujah. You're like TNT. Hallelujah. Because of potential. Hallelujah. You are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. The enemy has looked to where God is trying to take you, and he understands, amen, that he will be in trouble if you release your full potential. 
If you begin to pray and fast more and love more and give more and serve more, amen, and listen more and talk less, obey more and think more. So he wants to make you spend more energy, amen, doing unproductive stuff. But if you do the stuff that's productive and the things of God, amen, God will open up one to heaven of you and pour you out blessings that we won't have room to receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Things waste your time instead of realizing your potential. But when you realize your full potential and walk in it, there's no devil in hell in the earth realm that can stop your progress. Hallelujah. The earth is ours. The word of God declares that the heavens, even the higher and upper heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth, you know the scripture, but the earth has he given to the children of man. And so anything that has been given to us, anything that's in our possession, it's our responsibility to take care of it and to nurture it and to love on it. Amen. And do the things we need to do to cultivate it. Hallelujah. The same with your potential. The same with your opportunities. Take advantage of your potentials. Take advantage of the opportunities. Why? Because when you take advantage of your opportunities, you begin to walk in a whole dimension that you never thought you could walk in. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We walk places we never, we thought, we never think we can walk. We see things we never thought we would see. Hallelujah. We understand the word of God declared that eyes haven't seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of the man that things that he had prepared, amen, for those that love him. But there are some things, there are some things in the realm of the earth that God has showed you already. There are some things that you almost had to put your hand on. There are some things that you have access to right now. But when you open your full potential, when you reach, amen, down within yourself, and pull out every bit of intestinal fortitude that you have. Hallelujah. And reach, amen, for that potential. And pull that potential out of you. The devil scatters. He's afraid what you're going to be. He af he's afraid where you're headed. He's afraid what you can accomplish. He's afraid what we're going to do in the kingdom. He's afraid what's going to happen at Word of God Fellowship Church. Yes, we're moving. Yes, we're moving. He's afraid of what's about to happen. Easter, Resurrection Sunday. Do y'all remember the kids that came to the altar? Do y'all remember the families that came to the altar on Resurrection Sunday? Come on, somebody. That's, that's, that's a threat to the kingdom of darkness right there. So what's that telling the enemy? Uh, um, the things I was doing or when I want serving and when I want attending church I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start attending this church now I'm going to start moving out I'm going to start making sacrifice I'm going to start laying down what I feel that's right and do what I know is right it's a difference it's a difference when a place is here for you and we don't take advantage of, of, of what we have here Releasing, amen, the potential. The enemy knows that we are about to launch. He knows we're about to take off. Come on, somebody. He knows that we're about, amen, to move to a total different dimension. Things are changing. Things are being rearranged. Things are being put in place. Our man of God are preaching the mighty word. He's releasing his potential. And there's a threat in the kingdom of hell because our pastor, amen, is realizing his potential. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God declares that when Pharaoh saw that the people have increased, when he saw that they were multiplying, and the Bible said multiplying greatly and in great numbers, how many know, amen, you can't do things by yourself? How many of you know in here tonight that we are stronger together? Come on, look at your neighbor and say, we're stronger together. Come on, touch your neighbor and reach out and say, yeah, we're, we're, we're stronger together. We can do a lot more together. Yeah, we can. We can. 
No, no man is an island. No man walks alone. When he seen that, hallelujah, when he seen that the numbers growing, he came in dread of the people of Israel. Hallelujah. And he said, we got to put them to work. We got to make, amen, slaves out of them. We got, amen, to make sure that they don't come against us and they don't fight against us because if they fight against us, there'll be trouble in the land. So tonight, Word of God Fellowship, those online, I beckon you to release your full potential. Yeah, you may, you may have fallen and you may think God, amen, has left you. No, he's not left you. There's word. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And lo, I'm with you. Amen. Even to the end of the world. Hallelujah. A just man falls seven times. And I like this point right here. But, 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 but what make him just? What make him just? Amen. That he has enough intestinal fortitude, even after he knew he blew it, to get back up, dust himself off, and get, amen, and walk again. Amen. Hallelujah. He, he, he doesn't lay down. He doesn't have a pity party. Yes, I blew it. Yes, I blew it. But I got enough intestinal fortitude to get back up and understand, amen, that greater, amen, is he that is within me than he that's in the world. Yes, we fall. But the intestinal fortitude that's within a man and a woman of God causes us to rise up and realize our full potential. So tonight, Word of God Fellowship, I encourage you, I admonish you, unleash the potential. Awake the sleeping giant that's in you. Because the enemy knows that once potential is realized and once it's released, then there are possibilities. Hallelujah. And there's promises that you tap into. So tonight, we bless God. And we understand that we have power in our potential. Amen. Stand to your feet. I mean, I'm done. Hallelujah. Man, tonight, tonight, I just want to pray while you're standing there. Amen. If, if you're not afraid, I don't know, you reach over and just hook your neighbor by the arm. Just hook their arms. You don't have to grab hands. Amen. If, if you don't feel like touching anybody else's hand, amen, all of them will stand. Hallelujah. T tonight, tonight, I'm, I'm, drawn, I'm drawn to people that have ideas that haven't been released yet tonight I'm, I'm drawn to people that want to step out out of the ordinary tonight I'm drawn to people that wants to get outside of the box tonight I'm drawn to people who want to get out of the boat and leave the life raft in the boat and launch out into the deep amen all over the building all over the building, hallelujah, tonight, we are praying for those. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, tonight, we understand, Lord, there are abilities, there are potential, and there are things, God, on the inside of us that you have planted inside of us. And this night, God, this night, we want to release all of those things, all those gifts that you have given us. God, your word said that all good and perfect gift, it comes from above. And Father, tonight, we release everything, God, that we've been holding back. All the things that has called us, God, not to walk in our divine destiny. Father, this night, we release to you. And we thank you. We thank you. We are opening businesses, God. Tonight, we're moving out to new jobs. Tonight, we're moving out to new ventures in the name of Jesus. And we bind that spirit, God, that, that will cause us 
not to be confident, God, but we say, God, it's in you. It's in you that we live, we move, and we breathe, and we have our very being. So tonight, God, we release and we call on the name of Jesus. And tonight, we release now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen. 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 Thank God. Hallelujah. Amen. Realize, amen, there's power in your potential. God bless you. Word of God fellowship. Hallelujah.